So you're having difficulty with Skull Cavern. It's hard, it's difficult, and it seems like no matter what you do, Floor 100 seems to be so out of reach. Here is a more concise refresher on a video that I previously done on what you need to do or what you need to change so you can stop dying in Skull Caverns. Number one is to check what rings you currently have on your character. Most people that are completing the mines will have generally the basic rings that you can find in there, which is the Magnet Ring and the Glow Ring. Both of these rings are very basic rings and they don't really provide you any assistance within the Skull Cavern. Firstly, I would highly recommend the rings that are unlocked at certain combat levels. The Iridium Band is no doubt one of the best rings you can consider crafting yourself, which is unlocked at combat level 9. Not only does it combine the Magnet and Glow Ring, but it also combines a Ruby Ring benefit which increases your damage by 10%. The Thorns Ring unlocked at combat level 7 is also a really good ring. Every time you get hit by a certain enemy, that damage that they do to you will actually go back to them as well. Then there are the rings that you can purchase over at the Adventurers Guild. There are some really good notable mentions including the Emerald Ring which increases your weapon speed by 10% or even the Aquamarine Ring which increases the chance to critically strike an enemy by 10%. Also on top of that, in my opinion, some of the best rings are actually obtained when you complete certain goals for the Monster Eradication Goal within the Adventurers Guild. You can also purchase these rings once unlocked via the Monster Eradication Goal over at Marlin within the Adventurers Guild. Some notable mentions include the Crab Shell Ring, which provides your character plus 5 defense when worn and is achieved when you kill 60 rock crabs. Defense works by reducing the amount of damage an enemy can do depending on the amount of defense that item provides. So, for example, with this ring, when you've got plus 5 defense, an enemy will do 5 less damage depending on the damage that they do to you. The Savage is also a really great pick, and this is obtained when you kill 150 Void Spirits, which are found after floor 80 of the mines. This ring will provide your character a plus 2 speed buff for 3 seconds when you kill an enemy, which helps to create distance between enemies within Skull Cavern or reaching certain parts throughout the floors. There are some awesome rings that you can also obtain over at Ginger Island via the Volcano Dungeon, but for the purpose of beginners, I'll actually just leave a link of all the obtainable rings within Stardew Valley in the annotations and the description down below. Number 2. What weapon are you using. Now are you using the obsidian sword that is obtained within the mines at level 90? Generally within the mines this is a really great sword but this is actually different when it comes to skull caverns. The choice between sword, hammer and dagger is all a personal choice but having and choosing the best one actually matters. For swords the obvious suggestion is the galaxy sword which is obtained when you have a prismatic shard in your hands and head over to the three pillars over in Calico Desert. Doing this will actually unlock the other galaxy weapons including the Galaxy Hammer and Galaxy Dagger, which are two really great weapons to use. Although both of these will need to be purchased over at Marlin at the Adventurer's Guild, the Galaxy Hammer actually costs 75,000 gold, whereas the Galaxy Dagger will cost 35,000 gold. If you don't have yourself a Prismatic Shard ready for these Galaxy weapons, the next best sword is actually the Lava Container, which can also be purchased over at Marlin at the Adventurer's Guild for 25,000 gold. As for the next best dagger, it is the Broken Trident that you can find within Fish and Treasure Chests. And for hammers, there's the cudgel, which you can find within the mines at floor 101 or above. Number three, how are you progressing down within Skull Cavern? There are three ways in doing so. The first way and the most obvious way is using your pickaxe to break rocks to hopefully find yourself staircases and holes. Second, there are bombs. There are three different types of bombs, each having an increase of AOE of how much damage they do around them. And there are staircases that you can actually place yourself to progress yourself down. If you're trying is the pickaxe. You want to make sure that you have at least a gold pickaxe because the rocks within Skull Cavern actually require more damage to break. Even though a gold pickaxe is really useful, it's actually really recommended to try and get that to Iridium as early as you can. So there's a variety of ways to obtain yourself some Iridium ore that doesn't just include going to Skull Cavern and finding them that way. This includes breaking geodes over at Clint, possibly buying them from the traveling cart, having a meteorite fall on your farm that you can break, and having fish palms that have a 
larva eel, void salmon, super cucumber, rainbow trout, or spook fish within it. If bombs are your preference, it's a great idea to craft as many of these as you can. You can either craft them whilst you're in Skull Cavern because there's a good chance you'll be finding yourself some ores in there. You can buy them over at the Dwarf by breaking this little path over at the beginning of the mines. Or you can just farm the ores and the coal within the mines and using that to craft them. You can also trade in your resources over at the Desert Trader to gain yourself some bombs and mega bombs. Another great mention is the explosive ammo if you like using the slingshot. You can unlock the ammo at level 8 of combat and either craft them yourself or purchase them over at the Adventurers Guild. However, keep in mind that the explosive ammo will only explode when in contact with the surface, so that's either a wall or an enemy that's in its way. Lastly, descending yourself down using staircases in your inventory is obviously the most easiest way to progress yourself down within Skull Cavern. You can craft them yourself if you have 99 stone in your inventory, or better solution is trading jade over at the Desert Trader per staircase on Sundays. Number 4. Do you have food and beverages that give you any buffs? Your character can only be buffed by one drink and one food item at a time. My favorite beverage to bring over into Skull Caverns is the Triple Shot Espresso, which the recipe can be bought over at the Star Drop Saloon. I generally take two or three with me per Skull Cavern visit and use the boost provided by the drink to run past enemies and find a way to descend down quicker. Likewise, my favorite food option buff is the Spicy Eel, because not only does it additionally give you a plus one speed, but it also gives you a plus one luck buff. Off. The best way to obtain yourself spicy eel other than potential drops via the flying serpents within Skull Cavern is by trading in your ruby over at the Desert Trader. There are many other food and beverages that give you other buffs as well including defense, mining power and an increase in max energy. Number 5. Do you have any food that will replenish your health and your energy? On top of buffs there should be a food option that you carry around with you that will replenish your health and energy whilst inside Skull Cavern. Here is some easy Easy suggestions to those that want a quicker way of getting themselves some easy food to bring along with them. You'll want to get yourself some cows and mature them so they can provide you some large milk which when put into a cheese press will make you gold style quality cheese. This will return you 225 energy and 101 health. If this isn't for you but you do have a lot of money that you'd like to spend on some food instead, the Star Drop Saloon is the next best option. There is a variety of meals that are randomly picked throughout a day but this is a quick way of obtaining meals if cooking really isn't your thing. Lastly, I would suggest cactus fruit. This was actually a comment a few times in a lot of my other videos which I've actually never really considered but looking into it, it's actually a really good option. They can either be foraged when you're in Calico Desert but you can also grow them via seeds which can be purchased at the Oasis and also sometimes via the traveling cart. The higher the farming skill you have, the better the quality that cactus fruit will be which means iridium quality cactus fruit will return you 190 95 energy and 87 health. If you've got a quick and easy meal that you like taking into Skull Cavern, why not suggest it down below? This could definitely help someone out. If you are enjoying your stay so far, why not leave a like? If you want to see more videos, why not consider subscribing? And my Fuzzalicious candles are still available worldwide, so I'll leave the link down below. And finally, for number six, let's combine everything that we've learned for this video as well as some additional tips that will definitely help you out. For instance, I try to avoid fighting enemies as much as possible within Skull Cavern. The more you're spending time to fight enemies, the less you are finding a way to descend down. Always have a staircase ready or at least a stone to craft yourself a staircase to get yourself past an infected floor. Always prioritize going down a hole on a floor instead of using a staircase. A hole has the chance to take you down between 3 to 15 floors. Just remember that in doing so, by taking a hole, you will actually take some damage and the more floors you go down, the more damage you'll take. So be sure you've got your food handy to replenish you once you get onto that next floor. Be sure to go on a great or good luck day and you can find this out by checking out the television to find out your luck for the day. Skull Cavern isn't going anywhere so be sure to keep note on what works for you and keep doing that. Till next time guys, take care.